season five of The Score, the Team Roping Journal's podcast, where we cover the roping industry from top to bottom. This is where the team roping world talks. We talk through tough subjects, we talk big wins, and we talk real issues affecting the community. I'm your host and editor of the Team Roping Journal, Chelsea Schaefer. Hey everyone, this is Chelsea Schaefer. Welcome to The Score this week. Today's episode is with the $100,000 winners at the Resistal Reno Open. That is Andrew Ward and Buddy Hawkins. This is certainly not their first big win worth an episode of the podcast this year. As you know, they set the NFR average record in 2021 at the finals in Las Vegas. They are uh, won the Lone Star Shootout, which, by the way, you can watch that over on Roping.com. We've still got it up there. And they won the American, and they're in the top five in the world standings as we're recording this podcast, heading into Cowboy Christmas. Holy cow, I'm an Andrew Ward and Buddy Hawkins fan. If you're not an Andrew Ward and Buddy Hawkins fan, well, I th- I'm not going to say it, but I think you will be after listening to this podcast because they are something else. My soul is lighter for having listened to them after the fi- after they won this roping and it always is and I tried to make sure that we convey that in our editorial because these guys are jam up human beings and I hope you're listening to this podcast in the truck on the way to a high school rodeo or a, maybe maybe the high school finals maybe you're headed to the world championship junior rodeo at the lazy e while you're listening to this if you so good luck I hope you are getting to enjoy all of the goodness that is Andrew Ward and Buddy Hawkins. And maybe this podcast is going to motivate you as you head out on your own 4th of July run. Um, And yeah, thank you all for listening. I'm so grateful. It's been five years here at The Score and we love you all. And we appreciate that you stop by every other Thursday to listen to this interview. Today's episode is brought to you by Weaver Leather. We're going to tell you about Weaver Leather's new partnership with Smarty at the commercial break. Do you remember your short round steer moment by moment, like from the time you rode into the box till nodding your head to the whole run? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm walking in there. I'm just, uh, you know, praying, praying for peace and, and uh, trying to breathe good. I thought the cow was going to be better. I thought I had seen him be better. And so I was like, well, don't get the barrier. We had already talked in the back. We're like, we're going to finish the course and let these guys come beat us. Uh, so... I seen the cow too far, kind of my my ways a little bit. It is your way in the short I seen round, him. Huh? I seen him all the way out or close to you know, like I seen him take off, so I might have let go a little bit before, all the way out, and then uh, I just got to chasing, and then we got in a straight line, uh, using rope, and when when I've been chasing for that long is not risky to me, so I probably threw two coils. I roll every cow, so I rolled them, and uh, then, you know, Buds is going to rope two feet, and I turned around, and I was probably smiling. I don't really, I don't know what, I mean, I fist pump, I yell at Buds, I, I, I'm i happy. If we finished the course, whether anybody else, if we would have, if we would have won tenth, I would have mm-hmm. been yelling at Buds, good job, we did it, and then, because it's, it's exciting to me, and I love finishing. Buddy, do you remember, walk us through that short round play-by-play of, as far as your run goes? Yeah, so pro- probably the way it starts, like <clears throat> we're riding in. I I gotta be on I gotta be on green light because uh, Andrew, which my my dad, I can think him back in the day about one out of every three ropings, he'd nod and I wouldn't have my horse turned around. <laughs> he just when he was ready, he nodded, and so Andrew is not quite as impatient, but he waits till I'm pointed the right way. But but the the reason I'm saying that is is as I was riding in, I'm watching Snow and Thorpe, and you know I'd actually I'd kind of played it out a few different ways, and I different events i i treat differently this roping in particular andrew and i have pretty well been locked down to the first five cows we're we're not changing until they say you have to change to get your fees back so at guthrie for example we were like 34th on three 
and we are sitting over there we're like we got to go fast now if we're going to make the top 12 and so then we we started getting really aggressive and we put a couple fives on him well then we moved to fourth where we you know possibly could win the roping but back to that it was hard he tried to talk me into going at the third one and i couldn't do it i was just like do what you want but i can't tell you that i'm going to throw and then i cross fired the fourth one and the fifth one and might have cross fired the sixth one i i don't know what i was going to do because we were we had we had went on tilt and um I played a lot of poker, and there's times you go on tilt, and it, it pays you, and there's times that it doesn't, but we just decided we were going to go ahead, and we actually started from 34th on three, trying to win the roping, basically, and almost did it, but but over here today, the reason I'm saying it like that, I knew that Snow and Thorpe had, we had half a second on them, and I, I honestly thought, um, I honestly thought Snow was going to blow the barrier out and put it on him, and I thought Wes was going to crossfire, and they were going to be mid-five, is what I expected. And I was going to play our cow in accordance with, like, if they go mid-five and ours is strong, we're winning third and so happy we could. Um, but they actually made a beatable run. They were they were 6'8 or something like that. By beatable, I mean you add half a second to it. I don't think we were 7'3 all day. So I felt like they can give us a runner here and we can still be around that time. And they did. Um, but anyway, as I'm riding in, I'm watching that. And so immediately I look at the clock, 684. I add half a second to it, 734. So I'm like, I got a lot of arena here that we can do that. And I was expecting Andrew to be safe, and I thought the steer ran. So, and that's one of the deals. We only communicate about the steer when we're sure. And he thought he loped. I thought he ran. And uh, the good deal was... I played him like he ran and Andrew was going to be safe at the barrier. So I didn't put him on the hard side of the hard side of the arena. How do you have experience with that? Well, it's happened a time or two. <laughs> but I just know Andrew when you give him a chance to catch uh, he's not going to get the barrier. Like he's like we have maybe the fastest team of horses. Yeah, <laughs> we have maybe the fastest team of horses there are. So we feel like we can use you know like the back end of this arena is probably eight three for us, and then so we got a lot of arena we can use in the seven. So anyway, back to that. As as I'm circling in there, I've done the math and I've kind of confirmed it in my head. And we had the plan to catch, but I do I do play the numbers a little because I know it goes fifty twenty. 23, 10, 7,500. And so if I'm going to be in the 10 and 7,500, I might as well follow him to water and catch him for 5,000 or whatever. Um, but as I ride in, turn around, I'm I'm watching Andrew because that's just, that's just my start at these deals. When there's no heel barrier, I want to see when the gates bang. I don't leave then, but I just want to see when he nods. Um, sure enough, I get I get turned around. As soon as my horse hits the back of the box, Andrew nods. And I get I get going, and I can see the cows running, but I can't. But I can see Andrew's safe at the barrier um so i i start riding because the cow's running and i'm trying to put him off of his tracks a little bit because basically what we had drawn up over here was dead square if you put an x on this arena if this arena was a was a scope we wanted him in the bullseye we want him to dead center of this arena and so i know that when he gets his horse opened up i'm going to need to be having the steer on a left so that if when he does reach he's going to be able to reach the cow step in front of him and he'll take it because if he does fade to the right and he throws his whole rope um he's going to catch usually that steer is going to go like hips over his head a couple times i'm going to have to blow my rope up we could be seven eight real easy in that that spot but the 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 idea for me and then coming through the turn um i've really learned and i've studied this a decent amount but i've really learned not to think a lot about my rope um i i work on stuff on the dummy still all the time um but in these type of deals i don't really think about my rope and i could have i could have cross fired that steer subconsciously and i could have taken him three strides um but my horse was on was on point and i've rode several horses i thought deserved to win awards here and that was that was the best horse today that i've that i've ever rode here um and he uh it was it was no brainer. Like I heal him, steers still pretty strong when I dally. I put it on the horn soft. My horse is really strong when I hit the horn, and uh, it could have went either way. Like I had the clock running in my head. There's no way we were six eight, so I'm thinking we're you know we're between the six eight and seven five mark, and I was thrilled that we were able to edge ahead of of Snow and Thorpe. Um, and then I know during the run too, like we had already ruled out trying to duel with with Clay and Jake. They had the they had the advantage on us. If we were exactly this, if they were a tenth slower than us and got to go last, they still have the advantage because that's I mean, and that's why we run these ropings like this is give the advantage to the guys that rope the best. Where so where do you guys go from here? What's the route? We 
we rope it as far as the rodeos we rope at reno monday Greeley we run one wednesday morning two at pecos thursday two at santa fe friday hopefully back to reno then for sure back to Greeley. And pending if we make the short round at Greeley, we're up at St. Paul and Greeley. We'd be up at St. Paul and Greeley on the 30th, so we'd probably not not do the St. Paul. And then just because they'll allow you, when you make a short round, you're able to draw out. So you get that rodeo totally back. Um, then we'll go, so that'd be the 30th. Then um, on the 1st, we go to Livingston. We go to Red Lodge and Cody on the 2nd. Uh, Belfouche and Mandan on the 3rd. Kildare Mowbridge on the 4th. And then we're... we're we're going to have a couple days there. Um, we kind of did a little different route um, with the possibility that if we needed a little rehab for our horses, um, we're going to go to the Great Lakes that next week and go to go to a couple rodeos. They've got some good rodeos over there, Hamill and Spooner. And instead of duking it out with everybody at Elko and Vernal, um, they're a little higher paying rodeos at Elko and Vernal, but they usually set the barrier and the steers in such a way that we can kind of get on bad lines. And we're really prioritizing Casper and Sheridan are probably two of our favorite setups all year, and we'd like to make sure when we got to Casper and Sheridan, our horses were were on point. Um, so within that, we're basically taking a, a week. We're counting every rodeo, but we're taking a week and going to what might be questionably the medium rodeos of the week, um, with the perspective of wanting to do really good the week after. So we're we're planning on winning all the way through, obviously. Um, but that's that'll be a different route. I haven't been on that since a. Uh, a few years ago um, when I come out with Bright Kreitz for a while we kind of did a we went to the Dakotas um, which I'd, I hadn't entered anything else over the fourth so I started at the Dakotas and then went to the Great Lakes but we both have a lot of experience uh, the Dakotas and the Great Lakes feel they're closer to the Prairie Circuit than some of these others and they feel more like the type of stuff that we like <laughs> Train with Smarty and ride with Synergy. Known for well-built gear that supports you and your equine athlete, Synergy by Weaver's premium materials and American craftsmanship work together in Synergy with the latest technology for performance you can trust. With over 45 years of experience, Weaver Leather's rich heritage of fine craftsmanship pairs with Allen Bach's lifetime of first-hand experience to deliver hard-working tack you can depend on both in and out of the arena. Synergy by Weaver is backed by a no-risk 90-day test ride guarantee. The Weaver team is confident in every product that they make. If the product does not meet your expectations for any reason, simply return the item to the place of purchase within 90 days for a full refund. Check them out on social media at Weaver Leather and at Smarty the Steer. And stand by for more from Smarty and Weaver Leather throughout the year. Andrew, I think it's interesting you guys both brought up Webb. Um, and I feel like everybody sees 3S on a lot of people's shirts. And it's been a long time since I've written about Webb. Brandon, you didn't call me back the other day when I did try to call you, <laughs> for the record. <laughs> uh, but can you tell us about how you met Brandon? And obviously, I mean, we probably had Brandon on this podcast when he won Cheyenne. I mean, we certainly did write about him long ago. But... Give us a little rundown of Brandon Webb and how he is part of your families, pretty much. Uh, Brandon and Farrell are family to us, and uh, I got to start going down there to their ranch with uh, Colin Von On. He's one of my good friends, and uh, I'm, these these people are incredible, and uh, they just welcomed us in with open arms, and uh, I. You know, every time I, I get to talk to Webb, he, he uh, he's busy, and we could go down there and hang out with him, but he lives in uh, South Texas, so we don't cross paths a ton. Uh, but when we do, I mean, they just treat us like family, and they're, they're just the kindest people. Uh, they want to see us do good, and they know how expensive it is for us, so they just help us out. And uh, I, 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 it's it's a God thing. You know, I, I Webb, Webb talked to me at the BFI, and he said, you know, I always knew you would do it. I, I, I always knew you could do it, and I love seeing you guys succeed. And it's just stuff like that. Uh, if 
if we we could never repay back what what he's given to us because he he really helped me and Reagan even have the confidence to come out here and rope together. He's a big part of the reason is if we would go over there and practice and he'd be you know him and Colin be like I don't I don't understand why you guys don't go compete you know why don't you get out there because we circuit rodeoed for so long and uh, we would we would and Webb's trying to get better you know trying to make the finals so we're all like setting up scenarios and we're down there just trying to get better at roping and and they're such encouragers and and then you know Farrell she's great and so much she's such a fun person and uh just getting to be around them I mean it, it, it's a privilege and, and another God thing you know just putting uh great people in our lives and uh, I would you know after I'm done roping I'm gonna be you know calling the business guys that have uh, you know done well with money and 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 pick their brain and he's will i'm sure he'll be willing to give me all the advice he can to help me are you, you know, gonna be just turtle pal like uh well i could but it, it it might just be where you know just it i think it's that um inner circle you know yeah, those guys being absolutely. able to, that that guy he's incredible and it's not the way that um you know it's not because of his business it is absolutely the way he treats people and it, it it is so much fun to uh, be able to see. Um, we went to um, his birthday party, and his wife did this big deal about him, and have all the people around him um, in Feral too. They just treat people so well, and and I, I think they really show the father's love through what they do. And uh, so you know, it's just a privilege for us to be around them. And then they, they help us in roping, but. If, you know, just like Buds was saying, if they don't want to help us in roping, it doesn't change the fact of their family and great people. And as long as they'll let me hang out with them, I'll always, you know, Harper's roping now, and uh, I'm hoping that I can go turn him some steers. You know, when we cross paths, and uh, uh, it's just a, it's a blessing to know him, and we're we're thankful. You know, does he still have Rudy, the coolest head horse in history? Yeah, I think so. I. I, I, he's uh, slowing down roping now, and uh, probably because Harper's getting older and Hattie and Hallie, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, but he's still got Rudy, and uh, I know he turns a lot for Harper, and I, you know, I think that running that big company is takes a lot of time, and yeah. he he's got to be a part of it. But. Bud, anything to add on on oh, Brandon? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so uh, my my deal with Brandon happened a little bit different, um, but my uh, my 2018 was was you know t- the most the most hectic I guess would be the right word year of my life. But um, you know in that spring I I went through divorce, quit roping 100 percent, like I was only going to ride horses for the public because uh, that was my skill set, you know. Um, and I had a few other little business adventures. Um, but I went, I actually, I'd been roping with Lane Ivy, and so I let Lane, um, I, I encouraged him to go ahead and get a partner and go rodeo because we were in, you know, we had 20 or 30,000, one going into summer, and we're top 15 and doing good. Um, fast forward a little ways, I, I sat at home for about a month, and, and then I decided to go ahead and go, uh, I decided to go ahead and go rodeo. And anyway, I went out there, and, and you know, we have so many mutual friends but Webb and I had always just crossed paths and he's a he was a kind guy I'm I'm a nice guy um uh it just it it nothing had ever really sparked which is so interesting um but that fall uh Webb had decided he wanted somebody to um, come down there and rope with him a lot. And Colin was pretty busy. He's got his place up in Blanchard, and I was exactly in transition. I was basically homeless with a bunch of horses, and and so it, it worked out wonderful. And actually, my brother Josh and I went down there, and that's that's the best description I can I can give. And Andrew, and, or, or rather, Webb and I, Andrew and I do too. But Webb and I call each other brother, and he's you know he's the big brother I never had, or the you know uh. uh I had a I had a father, but he's a father figure to me as well. Um, and uh, but you know the the three S's stand for safety, service, and satisfaction. And and the service is really the only word. It could be one S because um, that's what's special about those guys is the way they serve and they you know they just love love people so well. And you know he always he always tells me you know when he helps me with stuff or whatever he's like man he's like you you guys out there like we want we want you guys out there. You guys are like part of our 
ministry, you know, out there on the road. And, and we want to see you and we want to be seen by you, but we, we want other people to see you too. And he's same, same thing. Andrew said, you know, we can get redundant, but for, for everybody that's encountered Webb, um, you know, Webb's one of the, he's one of the few guys. Um, he's, he's probably the wisest man I've ever been around, but he's one of the few guys who's always thinking about what someone else can get out of a deal. Not, not from a place of competitively, but like, how can I benefit someone else through this? And so few people, I, I think small business, not small businesses, but small minds in business think about how they can benefit regardless of the cost to others. And Webb is always looking at, and so pretty much every interaction he has with people, and that's why he's kind of a bit of a, he's a bit of a, a Yeti out here. Like a lot of people don't even know him. He does he does zero self-promotion. Yeah, no. And he, he tries to stay under the radar, and he loves team roping, and so he got involved. This is like the only public thing that he does. The ladies at 3 force him to do some stuff publicly and he tries to avoid it like the plague but but he taught me so much um, he had went through some stressful seasons and had gotten a little bit unhealthy and had really he taught me so much about the father and about peace and and uh, his own experiences with the father um, he reminds me of a story that I've that I've told a few times and I may have told it on a podcast but I love the story but it said that uh, uh, there was a there was an Indian chief when the pilgrims came to America and they asked if they could build a church on his land and he said sure that'd be great well week after week they have church he doesn't go so one time they approach him and they said hey chief thank you so much he's like anytime they said how come you don't come to our church though you know we've invited you he said well he said I just haven't figured out why I would go somewhere to hear about God when every day I can talk to God and uh, Webb reminds me a lot of that chief. He's he's absolutely involved in the church, blesses the church, does whatever, but he has such an in-tune relationship with the Father. Um, and I hear in business he's actually been accused of, like, you know, getting inside information because he, but he just has, he just has such a heart for people and a heart for the Father, and he operates in a way that's, that's like I said, it's always about what he can do. And, and I know the thing that, it, like, every meeting he would have, because I, so to progress a little bit, I apologize, but I, I spent the winter and spring of 18, 19, and 20 down there with Webb. So I've, I've spent like, you know, 12 of the last uh, 36 months down there at his ranch and, and had the privilege of helping him with some stuff. And he helped me with way more than I'll ever help him with. But but we have an excellent relationship. But back to that, at, at his meetings, he always says, um, you know, we're going to do the right thing whether we win or lose on the deal. And I think that's so important. And, and that comes back probably if we want to tie it into like Andrew and I today, I think the right thing was to catch the last one, whether we won the roping or Clay Smith and Jake Long won it or Cody and Wesley won it. Um, but but Webb has, and and the whole family and you know Webb to me Webb's like my big brother and and his his son uh, is like my little brother Harper. You know he's he's not even in my phone as Harper. He's in there as hunting buddy. And Harper and I text. We still text all the time. Webb and I text all the time. And it's like I can be just like with with real family because they are real family. I cannot talk to Webb for four months. And then I can talk to him for like six hours straight and then not talk for four months again. And it's always a, a firm embrace. And, you know, he's way more excited about what's going on in our lives than he is the, the dollars and the successes, you know, little Ann and all that. I mean, that's he's just a he's just a big hearted guy that's given been such a such a leader for me in my life in places that I that I maybe was a little immature. And I got to experience that with him. And then all the business stuff, like we said, that's that's just a bonus that he he shares some of his success with us but the the big things are are all the all the lessons learned well guys i think anybody who listened to this podcast will have learned a lesson because you guys are always so wonderful and so insightful (laughs) so thank you all so much it is you have a baby girl to go tend to i better go see big ann she's (laughs) out there in the trailer this is her first this is her first bfi reno here so she's (laughs) and last so she she got here just in time to get a few photos with bob himself (laughs) uh she was amazing on the stage so i did take a bunch of videos of her like (laughs) very tight so i did send them to our girl who does our TikTok editing. I don't know what she'll come up with with baby Ann, but it was <laughs> hilarious. I love it. Yeah, that's, that's great. Well, she was she was kind of excited. She's a lot like her dad. 
uh, it sounds bad, but like my, my nature is really to get away from people like this setting doesn't bother me, but like when there's a billion people around there, I'm much more comfortable going on the stage and, and not no one talking to me. Just take a few <laughs> pictures and I'll be quiet. She liked that. She was like down there and everybody was poking and jabbing. And then she got up in the stage and everybody left her alone for a minute. So <laughs> she's, she's a lot like that. She gets a ton of attention. I was definitely poking and jabbing her because I hadn't seen her. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Thank Have a good you. night. Thank you for sitting Safe down. Safe travels, of course. Thank you again to Andrew's uh, sponsors at Smarty and Weaver Leathers for sponsoring today's episode. It was simply a coincidence that Andrew, who is a Smarty and Weaver Leather indoor C, um, happened to be the guest on today's episode, but certainly a great turn of fortune. So thank you all for listening. Remember, check them out at www.ridethebrand.com.